tree diagrams. So a tree diagram is a useful tool when we want to visualize probabilities with successive events. So we're going to draw a tree diagram for tossing two coins. So because it's successive events, our first set of branches is going to be for the first event. In that first event, we can get a head or a tail. So this is our first event. Then we draw another set of branches of each of the ends for our second event of all possibilities. So if we get a head on the first time, on the second time, we can also get a head or a tail. If we got a tail the first time, on our second go, we can also get a head or a tail. On a, on a tree diagram, we write the probabilities on the branches. The probability of getting a head is a half, probability of getting a tail is a half, same over here and here, and same here and here. So now if you've done it correctly, each set of branches should always add up to one because they're supposed to cover all possibilities in their group. On the right hand side, let's write the consequence of what happens. So if we follow this first branch, we get a head and then the top branch, we get another head. So we can write this one giving us a head head. Here we can get a head, then a tail, and keep going, we get a tail head, and then tail tail. When we move along the tree diagram this way, these are successive events. These are things happening one after the other. But all of these are compound events. They can't happen at the same time, they all happen they're all just a possibility of what can actually happen. To get one of these, we multiply all probabilities leading up to that path. So if we want the probability of getting a head and a head, we just multiply all probabilities leading up to it. So we've got a half times a half. And a half times a half, we just times our numerators and denominators together. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, and we get a quarter. We can do the same for all of these. And they're all going to be a half times a half. So they're all going to be a quarter. Now, how can we use the tree diagram to answer more questions? What's the probability of getting exactly one head? Well, let's have a look at all the possibilities that give us one head. Here we get two heads, so that's not one. Here we get one head and one tail, so that's one. And here we also get one head and one tail. And here we get no heads. So the two probabilities we're interested in are this one and this one. And whenever we're interested in more than one probability, on the end we have to add those probabilities together. So it's going to be a quarter plus a quarter, which is two quarters, and that simplifies to a half. So to sum up, whenever you move across the tree diagram this way, you need to multiply your probabilities together. And whenever you're looking at more than one event here, with compound events, we need to add them this way. Mm -hmm.